Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Today, Dr. Dr. Gao will present. We'll do a <coughs> we'll do a presentation. It's about pediatric mandatory massage, uh, also called turna in Chinese language. It is easy to learn, and also it is very convenient to practice. You can practice at home, at the bed for your kids. Also, it's really effective. It could help stopping the minor symptoms at the very beginning. Um, the second part is Q and A. But during the meeting, you also can print out your question in the chat room. Okay, now let's welcome Dr. Gao. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Gao. I uh, welcome everyone to here this afternoon. So before I start the lecture, I would like to introduce the Accompany Children to Growth Healthily Initiative. So you might, you also see the screen, uh, share screen. Right? So we are a group of enthusiastic and caring registered healthcare practitioners, uh, mainly traditional Chinese medicine practitioners based in BC, Alberta. In the future, probably more from Ontario. So this initiative aims to improve children's and youth's health uh, from age, from baby, newborn to teenagers in our communities by advocating healthy diets, healthy lifestyles. We also providing free health consultation for uh, anyone who would, would like to be in our initiative. We are committed to ethical and professional standard practice to meet the requirements of the bylaw and the regulation under the Health Professional Act of Canada. Uh, so the reason we would like to do this initiative is Chinese medicine have so much to offer every family in our community. However, not many people know that. So I have practiced 13 years in BC, in Vancouver. Uh, I have many patients, I, many parents come to see me, but when their children are sick, they don't know, they don't approach me. So they don't know how Chinese medicine can help their children. Right? So that's, that's why we feel an urge to do this initiative. And we are not alone, we are a group of registered professionals. We also have academic support from mainland China. So basically, we have lots of professionals, professors, and specialists from China who support, um, who support us academically. So currently, our uh, major interest area to is for January, February, uh, March, and April, we will deliver lectures regarding pediatric twina, it's like pediatric meridian massage. In May and June, we'll talk about food sensitivity, food intolerance. Okay, so those are very important areas for children's health currently. And right now it's pandemic season, a pandemic period. So I, that's why I talk about uh, lung issues first, right? Some uh, very uh, practical pediatric trainer techniques for the lung issue. That's why we put this one in January and February. Okay, so that's um, that's the introduction. So let me share the screen of the lecture. Did you see the new share screen or I need to start? Uh, no, yeah. Do you want to stop the share screen and reshare oh, okay. re one more time? Thank All you. All right. 
Did you see the new one? Yes. Okay. So um, my apologies. As at the beginning, I set up at 4 p.m. and then I will think 2 p.m. is a bit better. So we changed the time. We have 50 people registered uh, for the for the class, but right now probably they are coming in. Okay. So this is the uh, welcome to our first English Zoom seminars for pediatric meridian massage. Uh, for people who don't know me well, I introduce myself a bit. So I have practiced over 20 years in China and Canada. Uh, I moved to Vancouver in 2000, at the end of 2004, start practice uh, in 2006 in Vancouver West. Uh, at the same time, I've been teaching for uh, since 2000 oh, in a private and public school teaching uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Okay, so um, I know some of you are my students, some of you are my patients, and some may not know me. Okay, before we really talk about the technique, I would like to introduce the history of Chinese medicine pediatrics. So back to 3,000 years ago, the classics of TCM already mentioned how to preserve children's health, that those classics, Huang Di Nei Jing, was written in bamboo slips. Uh, but today I want to talk about the first textbook of pediatrics is called a collection of essential pediatric patterns and treatments. So you can, when you see the share screen, you can see it was printed in year of 1119. Right? So it's back counting um, like 1000 years ago. Right? And this is, this print is 300 years before the first one in Europe, in Italy, right? So that's, and this book, it's only taught about children's health, children's disease, right? So the author is Qian Yi. So he is very well known in our Chinese medicine and, and all the Chinese medicine doctors. During the Ming and Qing dynasty, uh, also the pediatric TCM pediatric flush with the formulation of specific herbal formulas and pediatric twina or acupuncture protocols for children, especially for um, prevention measures. And regarding the pediatric massage book, this is, the, this is considered <clears throat> as the first one. It's called Classic of Pediatric Tuina is published in year 1601. And from that time, PDG Tuina evolved into a highly systematic treatment modality. So it's not like a little bit here, a little bit there. It's very systematic for the whole body and all systems, prevention and treatment. So it developed, it become an independent system uh, accompanied with for the, uh, herbal formulas and acupuncture. It, it becomes an independent system. So that's what I want to stress here before we learn the technique. Pediatric Twina is used to prevent and treat disease by employing various manipulative techniques on specific parts of the body, appropriate to children's specific pathological physiological and pathological characteristics. Uh, it's what we do is actually guided by the TCM diagnosis. So today, if uh, I, I will talk about special terms. So if you are not familiar with Chinese medicine, uh, be patient and take it easy when you heard lots of special terms, right? because this is a, it's a system of medicine. And if it's new to you, just be patient. Uh, we will learn for the whole year and then a, a year again, right? because we will keep go this initiative 
test will keep going. So that's why uh, I have been teaching for over 13 years. So I, I treat everyone as my student. So it's, I, I have a higher requirement and higher standard, but it's easy to learn. It's, it's not difficult. Just at the beginning, you might feel a little bit complicated because lots of manipulation techniques. So the term Tuina literally means pushing, grasping, uh, needing. So we will focus at three major areas. One is points, certain points, and also lines. So you will see when later on when I introduce to you is AI from point to point. So that's lines. And then area. Area can refer to surfaces. Right? So a certain uh, if relatively bigger area, let's say on the upper abdomen area, so it's a surfaces, right? Or on the chest area, so this we, we say is a surfaces. Right? So there's a points, lines, and area is a surfaces. Long history of PDG Twina practice and many clinical studies on pediatric Twina has proved its clinical effectiveness and efficacy. Okay, so that's the brief introduction of the history of TCM pediatrics and pediatric Twina. <clears throat> At the same time, if you have any questions, feel free. Can you see my share screen well, or is too small? We're, we're able to see your screen really well. OK, OK. Um, at the same time, if you have any questions, feel free to type in the chat box. But today, we have around 10 TCM doctors from Vancouver and from US, uh, from New York area. Uh, from New Jersey area and also from uh, LA, San Francisco areas to join us. So you can ask question right now why I'm uh, talking at the same time they will uh, answer your question. Okay, right now is about a brief introduction of how Chinese medicine see a child trial. So it's called TCM physiological characteristics of children. So how we how TCM understand a child's body. So first important concept is called baby in, baby yang. So we know they are babies. Right? Even though they are 10 years old, they're still young. So it's everything's not fulfilled not growth yet so it's in yang baby in baby yang means it's we need to pamper pamper this baby in and baby yang and that's why they have more delicate zhangfu organs physically qi is not fulfilled in zhangfu organs so it's a babies right another concept is we call pure yang Yang refers to vitality. Pure yang means full vitality and rapid development. So three-year-old child, they are so naughty. If they are not naughty, they are not right. So that's referred to pure yang. And they develop so fast. If you don't see your baby like one week, they totally change. Every day, I think, uh, uh, let's say let's say if you are raising a three months year old baby every day the baby has changed right so <laughs> compared to adults we don't have the kind of change right after one year we we may not change much so this is called pure yang refer to growth development so full vitality and rapid development they grow fast so that's why because they are all the yin and yang is still uh, 
unfulfilled. So all the cheese is clear, pure, light. Right? So that's what we call clear zang qi. Uh, zang refer to our heart, lung, liver, spleen, and kidney organs. Right? And fu, you, you, will, you will see that fu, F-U, refer to um, small, large intestine, stomach, gallbladder, bladder, right? So Chinese medicine separate these organs. So their zhang qi is very clear. So once they have anything, if you treat them properly, if they receive treatment and care properly, it's easy to recover. So this is also the key point, and we feel like we really would like to teach you the pediatric massage is at the early stage of any condition at home, if you are able to help your child at home at the early stage, they recover easily. Number two, they are easy to get sick. Evil chi, evil chi, we can also call it pathogenic, pathogenic qi is easy to transform to different syndrome. So this is, um, let's say, uh, if your child in the morning has, has a little bit common cold, itchy throat, feel chills, and then um, no appetite, in the afternoon, you will develop to high fever. Right? So from chills, colds in the morning, after a couple of hours, it developed into high fever. So this kind of transformation is rapid and it's way faster than adult pathogenic development. So that's why any home care for children is, is important. They, 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 it might develop into a into dangerous stage. So we call here easy to have deficient excess cold or heat. Uh, we will talk about deficient excess later on when we talk about uh, more detailed techniques. Okay, number three, I just talked about zhang organ. Right? Zhang organ, zhang organs refer to the major, major interior organs, the so lung, spleen. Kidney, qi is often deficient. Liver, heart qi is often excess. So what does that mean? It's lung system in biomedicine. It's like a respiratory system. Right? And spleen refer to digestive system. And kidney, a urological system. Um, so for children, these three parts are relatively weaker. So that's why children easy to have cough, easy to have poor digestion, constipation, and diarrhea, right? And kidney chi here, uh, for biomedicine, if you look at kidney, it's urological. But for Chinese medicine, you have a blood application. So kidney refer to a vitality of growing. Right? So if kidney chi is too weak, this child cannot glow well or not high enough, not tall enough, right? or a little bit uh, mental retardation, a little bit slow, right? uh, uh, teeth glowing slow, right? hair going slow, speaking is a little, very, a little bit slow. This is a refer in Chinese medicine to the kidney qi. So these three organs, are often deficient, means not enough good qi, not enough good energy in these three organs. So later on, we'll learn about five meridians massage is very, um, just target about these five organs. In the opposite way, liver and heart qi is often excessive. They will have, we call it heart fire and liver fire. So this is the opposite way of the previous three organs. So you can see during the high fever, our children 
might have convulsion. Okay? So this is also, um, it is, we consider liver fire. And then if you have child at home, do you find out sometimes the child could not sleep well, toss and turn a lot, crying a lot at night time? This is also might related to heart fire. Or uh, a child might uh, have bad temper. Right? So this is also liver and heart fire. Okay, so, so just make a small note and memorize five organs, three are more on the weak side and two are more on the stronger side. Right? They are both not right because it is we call yin yang imbalance. Okay, right now we need to talk about the first step of manipulation. So today, um, I'm we are talk we will learn five major manipulations for lung issues. The first is opening orifices. The last one is closing the orifices. So let's like open the door and then close the door. Okay, so, so and even though inside of, when you open the door, you need to do a couple of steps, but just remember that opening and closing. So right now we are learning the opening part. You can see from this picture, the opening part is open one, two, three. Okay, including five manipulative techniques. They are called standard techniques, which means you can use for any disease, any issues, even for a daily uh, health maintenance, it's all okay. So this is a, we call standard techniques. Okay, the first one, it's, you can see, 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.3. Number one, it's for, we call pushing the heaven gates. Number two, pushing the heaven gates is a line from between the eyebrows all the way up to the forehead, to, a, to the hairline, straight up one line. And then the second one, scrape the water palace is from the head of the eyebrow to the end of the eyebrow. Right? So that's what we talk about line. So here, number one is a line. Number two is also a line. Number three is a temporal region. The uh, location is Taiyang Temple. Okay. So uh, Bobby, would you please play the video? We can see the video. Sure. I'll stop share the screen. Mm -hmm. This video will demonstrate how to open the orifice. Push the heaven gate. Push it for 24 times in a moderate pressure. Scrape the water palace from the medial side to the lateral side of the eyebrows. Circulate the temples for 24 times. This is a conditional step. Scrape the mastoid bone during an episode of febrile condition, 
scrape it for 48 times on each side. Would you please replay the video, uh, replay those manipulated steps again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the uh, heaven, heaven gate. Yeah. Yes, here. Let's see it one more time. Okay. Push the heaven gate. Push it for 24 times in a moderate pressure. Scrape the water palace from the medial side to the lateral side of the eyebrows. Circulate the temples for 24 times. This is a conditional step. Scrape the mastoid bone during an episode of febrile condition. Scrape it for 48 times on each side. Okay, I just see the I just see the chat. Someone's uh shall I say uh the V check code is expired. What does that mean? Cafe. What's, what does that mean? Yeah. Cafe? Okay. You, you know, I, I didn't, I, it's not me, from Charlotte. Looks oh, like Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. So, do you need me to put uh, pre-toast in the, um, in the WeChat group? Is it the meeting ID and password? Okay, so yeah, so uh, you answer the uh, shell in the in the chat. I'll continue. So everyone, uh, you can see the three steps is to open the orifices. I hope everybody kind of remember. It's easy. Number one is from between the eyebrow to the center of the forehead. Right. So this is called heaven gay. If you look at me, right. Another one is from along the eyebrow, right, along the eyebrow, and then number three is circulate. I right, use the the fingers right, to circulate around the temple. Right. It, uh, normally, we use we press like many, do twenty four times, right, twenty four times, and uh, the conditional step is around the temporal region, mastoid bones. This one is 48 times when this child feel very hot and have a high fever. So if the child doesn't uh, have high fever, you don't need to do the mastoid bone. Right? So just those, those three steps for open the orifice. orifice. The head region. And right now we will talk about open the orifice on the hand, on the hand. So, let me share the screen again. Can you guys see it? Hi, Jennifer. Yeah? Can you share the screen? Do you mind to put it on the presentation mode? So it's just on the bottom of the PowerPoint and there is an icon. Try to share one more time. One more time? Uh-huh. Is it okay now? Uh, not yet. Okay, okay. I'll just, mm. <laughs> I'll share one more time. No worries. Uh, let me see. Presentation. Oh, no. Perfect. Now we can see the PowerPoint in the presentation mode. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. All right. So the second steps for opening the orifices is on the hand. So we call uh, this location, we call center tendon. Very easy. Just 
on the medial side of the wrist. Medial side of the wrist, center of the medial side of the wrist, we call center tendon. Needing, also use your thumb, gentle circulate. Right, gentle circulate. And then from the center tendon, tendon spread, spread to the side is called divide in and yang. So Bobby, I, here, let me continue a little bit more. Oh, so I need to go back to here. So what's, let me go back here. What's the purpose to open the orifices on the head region? It can dispelling wind, relieving exterior. So this is about if a child has exterior wind attack, right? at the moment they got common cold, or they catch cold. This in Chinese medicine, this is called exterior wind cold attack. And that is very good. This, this is very good for release that winkle attack at this early stage. And you can also open orifices and freshen the mind. Uh, it can calm the spirit. So, so if the child has severe stuffy nose, runny, runny nose, uh, itchy throat, feel chills, you can use stronger stronger pressure, but still moderate pressure. If at night time, your child is irritable, uh, crying a bit, you can still use this technique for calming the spirits, right? gentle pressure. And many parents told me, even though they do it for themselves, they feel clear mind. Right? They, they, they like to do that. Okay, so this is number one, the purpose for this first step of opening orifices. And second one, let's see here, the location, the point is a PC7. And we will talk about PC, we'll talk about point location later on. So in between two tendons, okay, so that's why we call this center tendons. It's a center of two tendons. Yin and yang on the thumb area, if you move, from the center tendon to the thumb direction is in and then move to the little finger direction is called yang okay this is yang and then just uh, use two hands divide yin and yang so we we'll, we we'll also see the video first bobby Need a center tendon. Place your thumbs on the center tendon. Place your index finger on the back of the hand. Lift your index finger in a moderate pressure. Apply 424 times. Push and divide yin yang. Find the center tendon first. Push from the center point to the opposite side. Apply 424 times. Uh, Bobby, one more time. Need a center tendon. Place your thumbs on the center tendon. Place your index finger on the back of the hand. Lift your index finger in a moderate pressure. Apply 424 times. Push and divide yin yang. Find the center tendon first. Push from the center point to the opposite side. Apply 424 times. Okay, 
Okay, the action for need the center tendon and then divide in yang. You can see in the share screen. So need center tendon can decrease the heat and stop vomiting because that meridian is a very good, like pericardium, PC meridian is very good for um, for anyone has nausea feeling, vomiting. Right? And then it can also, it's a pericardium meridian, it also can calm the spirit and very good for pediatric convulsion. Push uh, in and divide in and yang is to balance and harmonize the body can also promote digestion, resolve food retention. Because for, uh, for children, uh, they often have indigestion. Okay? So that's uh, very, this on the, on the face, on the head, open the orifices, it's more for clear the mind, uh, reduce headache. But for on the hands, it's more for indigestion. So it's, that's why this technique it's very good for whole body and for whatever condition, even for everyday health maintenance. So let's continue. After mm -hmm. we... I didn't have to sign up, so I don't know why. I think I just have to, to upload it, the download the app. Uh, hey, Bob, Bobby. Okay. Um, so after we open the door, right, you do, do some, you know, we need to make effort to open the door and we can start working for the interior organ. Oh. So up, okay, interior organ. So what should we do is pushing five meridians. Okay, so that's it, that's it. Lung uh, from the, th for the thumb is spleen meridian. Liver, index finger, middle finger, heart, lung, ring finger, and little one. Little finger is a kidney meridian. So please memorize these five meridians. That's only specific for children's pediatric twina. Okay. Um, only in this system, the five meridian on the fingers. Uh, it's like that. So how to manipulate is if you need circle, need around the medial side of the fingertip, it's called tonifying. And if you reduce, it push towards from the fingertip towards the palm, but make sure it's on the medial side, on the inside, on in the palm, not on the uh, dorsal of the hands. So push towards the fingers that is called reducing. So why here you have the new concept about tonifying and reducing? Because we just talked previously, these five strong organs, some are tend to deficient. Liver and heart are tend to excessive. That's why in order to balance yin and yang, to balance not too much, not too weak, uh, we use combined tonifying and reducing technique on the on here. Right? So that's uh, a more difficult part when you uh, start this manipulation is you need to remember. So you see the left side of the screen for spring meridian, it means the thumb. We always, always want to tonify in. because children always have indigestion, food retention. If you, if this child has severe food retention, you would like to reduce, then we should follow the tonifying technique. Okay, so that's the key. And lung, it can do both. Lung can do both. Kidney, we always want to tonify, because kidney in Chinese medicine refer to pure yang, refer to essence and it's how a child grows healthily so 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 kidney we always only suggest tonifying technique 
liver and heart, they are always on the excessive, excessive, excessive side. So we highly recommend use reducing technique. But when you're using reducing, uh, when you use tonifying, try to reduce. Right? So this is balancing. A um, little bit complicated if you're new to Chinese medicine. Uh, also, so if you would like to do that, you can write it down in the fresh card and then uh, practice every day. When you practice more, it's not difficult at all. And also, different age has a different requirement of times. Okay, so you can see here, uh, for a older age, teenager, like pre pubertal uh, children, is 800 times. Compared to a under one year old baby, is only 150 times. Right, so that is the five meridian manipulation. The speed is 200 times per minute which means you need to do it a little bit faster. Okay, so that's, that's the theory. Bobby, would you please play the video? This video will demonstrate how to push the five meridians. The meridian system is a concept in the traditional Chinese medicine. Meridians are paths through which the life energy. Thumb is associated with the spleen meridian. Index finger is associated with the liver meridian. The long tall finger is associated with the heart meridian. The ring finger is associated with a long meridian. The little finger is associated with a kidney meridian. Now just remember, gently knead the meridians to totify the body energy. Push towards the palm to reduce. Okay, so that's a uh, five meridian. After pushing five meridians, five meridians it's also for whole body, for whole body. And then the number three steps is magic rivers, right? So three rivers on medial side of forearms. Right? So this, uh, I, this one is called heaven rivers. Another one's called triple gate and six foot. So let's look at here. Push Heaven River. So the location for Heaven Rivers is from center tendon. Right? So on the medial side of the forearm on the wrist, crease, um, and push all the way up to the elbow crease. Right? So that's on, at the, on the center, on the center of medial arm. Uh, two points here is PC7 and PC3. So this is a magic river. We call it magic river. And there are two rivers besides magic river. Look at here. One is triple gate. So triple gate is on the, um, on the side of the thumb. Okay, so, so just remember triple gaze on the side of the thumb and the pushing direction is the same as heaven river is from the wrist crease all the way up 
to the elbow crease. So this is on the uh, thumb side, still on the medial part of the forearm. The other one, reduced full. So it's reduced full is the opposite direction of the previous two. We need to push from the elbow crease all the way downward to the wrist crease. So there's a free reverse in the middle, heaven river. So heaven river is very effective for cool down the body, for clear the heat. Right? So if you, the child at home has fever at the beginning, right? and then you can use this technique. And again, to push the two rivers besides them. But when you look at the action of these two rivers, you will find out they have opposite function. So the triple gaze, it can warm the body, right? promote sweating, expel the exterior. So when a child have a common cold or have uh, at the beginning of common cold, you would like to promote sweating. You would like them to sweat, open the skin pores, sweat a bit to get rid of the pathogenic energy. Right? And this one is good to warm the body, let the skin pores open a bit more at the beginning. And then six full is to clear heat. So in summary, heaven river, the middle one, and the six full has the same action. Heaven river, it has a stronger action than six full. But triple gaze is the opposite action, is warm. So Chinese medicine really focus on balance yin and yang. So we never do one side only. We always like to do take care of both sides. We like to take care of yin, take care of yang. But how to balance this by pushing triple gaze and reduce six full? Here it is. Or look at the left side of the screen. We use ratio one to three or three to one, right? So it looks a little bit tough. So I give you an example. For if a child is very cold, very cold, shaking, then you can use warming meridian. Warming uh, action meridian is a triple gaze 150 times and then reduce six full 50 times. If the child has a high fever, you would like to push the heaven reverse at the same time push triple gate only 50 times and reduce full 150 times. Okay, so this is how you balance and make sure uh, there's no side effect, right? So you, you don't call, you don't tonify the body too much or you don't reduce the body. So this is Chinese medicine to balance yin and yang. Bobby, videos, please. This video will demonstrate how to push heaven river, push triple gate, reduce six full, push little finger crest. Heaven river passengers, here is how you can find the location of heaven river. Make sure the palm is facing upward. The passages in between the two tendons from the wrist stripes to the elbow crease. Use your index finger and middle finger. Gently push from the wrist straps to the elbow crease. You can also apply some water on your two fingers to make it more moisture. Triple gate. Here is how you can find the location of triple gate. Palm facing upward, near the wrist joint. 
close to the radial artery. With index finger and middle fingers, push from the wrist straps to the cubital fossa of the elbow. Here is how you can find the location of six foot. Palm facing upward, near the wrist joint. Owner side of the forearm. With your index finger and middle fingers, push from the elbow crease to the wrist straps. Pushing the triple gates and the six foot can be used in a combination with a ratio of either 1 to 3 or 3 to 1. Here is how you can find the location of little crease. Make sure the palm is facing upward at the root of the little finger, owner side of the crease. Knee gently 30 to 50 times. Okay, let's back to the lecture. I, here, this free reverse a little bit complicated, but uh, don't forget on the thumb side, it's triple gay is warming, right? On the a little finger side, like the uh, owner side, it's six foot, right? So it's a cooling, and in between them is a magic river called Heaven River. The Heaven River is uh, very cooling. So right now, many children have, let's say, apart from this lung situation, they have eczemas. And when they have eczemas, the body is very hot, very hot. So you can still use Magic River and this push triple gaze, reduce six foot technique to help your child. Right? So this right now we cannot do face-to-face -face demonstration and i hope you can see the video quite quite well <laughs> okay next one here a couple page is the location so um you can see it, this is the pericardium meridians this is for uh 12 meridian system Pericardium meridians is a line of heaven river, right? and you can see from this picture that you can see clearly where the PC PC seven is, right? The red dot, right? and then uh, the location of PC three, okay, and also has a detail um, detail description of the location. Right? So you can you can read read and understand that this picture is from a manual of acupuncture. So it's a professional textbook learned uh, by the TCM students. Right? When they learn to become an acupuncturist, they use this textbook. So this part uh, for your own studying, if you don't understand, you can join the Facebook group, private group, or VCheck group and you can ask questions in the future and the other one is heart meridian heart meridian is a line of six full right? so remember when we reduce six full it's from the uh, cubital crease means from elbow downward to the wrist crease right? so you can see uh, that means when that is the um, when people have golf elbow, right? So that's around there. Right? It's it's around on the on the owner side, right? and then uh, heart seven here. Heart seven name is H E seven, H E seven. Okay. The other picture is a line of triple gate has a warming effect. Right? As a from lung nine to lung five is on the thumb side thumb side <clears throat> so this part is uh, i don't explain too much we don't have enough time so for your own studying and you have seen the video of neat little finger crest so why why is like that because this is a specific point for relief 
reduce cough and asthma. So this is specific lung point for pediatric twina. The previous points lines they are for general application. They're working from the whole body. So they are very powerful because they can use for many situations, whole body. But this one is specific for the lung system. So it's very easy. I, I bet you guys all learn because it's already in the video. And at the root of little finger and just kneading gently 30 to 50 times. It's very good for open the chest, expand the lung, helping lung to transform the phlegm out. So after that, if after you manipulate on little crease, uh, if your child cough a little bit more, that's normal because they try to cough out, dispel the phlegm. Right? So and uh, here say dispel nodules is a phlegm nodules inside of the lung. Right, so this is uh, also a very good one. Okay. Next combined techniques, we call open the chest. This is a specific on the chest area and uh, specific for cough right? and then for uh, lung system. Right? So it combines of four manipulative techniques. You can see a important point, it's called CV17, Sanzong, in between the center, in between two nipples. So the um, <clears throat> manipulation is all center around this point. So first, remember this point between nipples and then the CV17. This is a very important acupuncture point we call the uh, meeting point of qi, meeting point of qi. So when you manipulate, it's a gently uh, circle kneading in a circle motion, repeat 50 to 100 times. That's number one. Number two, it's horizontally push around uh, CV17. It's, you can see the big arrows. You see there's two big red arrows. It's, you need to horizontally use two hands push from CV17 to the nipple area, both hands. Right? Still may push away from CV17 to two nipples, 30 to 50 times. And then the third manipulation is vertical. Vertically push around CV17, right? Um, gently push, uh, use, you can use index, middle, and ring finger together, push uh, downward, like so from supra external fossa downward to CV17. So the starting point is around the um, collarbone region at the, on the center, and then the end point is CV17. So it's vertical motion. And then the number four, it's also uh, it's pressing the intercostal space. So from underneath the collarbone, there's a, a rib cage, rib cage. Right? So it need to feel the inter, intercostal space and then gently press from number one in the intercostal space to number five. So gently circulate motion, uh, needing those points. And the acupuncture point is on the kidney meridian, KI27 to KI23. So it KI, kidney meridians, it's the midline between the center line to the uh, nipples. Okay, so it sounds a little bit tough, difficult, but it's no. It's the, the center of the body, the sternum, the center of sternum, and then the nipple in the middle of these two 
this is kidney line. Okay, so you can also see uh, the big arrows here. In short, these four manipulation, number one, circle around CV17. Number two, spread away from CV17. Number three and number four, they are all vertical from underneath the collarbone downward, but three lines, one at the center, number two on the side, beside the center. Right? So, so if you draw it out, it's not difficult. Uh, Bobby, video, please. Or twin open. This video will demonstrate how to push in the chest with different approaches. Tendron is the middle point in between two nipples. Method number one. Knead tendron with centers of the thumb or the middle finger. Knee in circular motion. Repeat it 50 to 100 times. Method number two. Horizontally pushing around tendron with centers of the middle finger. Simultaneously push away from tendron towards two nipples. Repeat it 30 to 50 times. Method number three. Vertically pushing around tendron with index, middle, and the ring fingers together. Gently push down from the supersternal fossa. Passing through the tendron until the lower sternum repeated 30 to 50 times. Method number four. Pressing the intercostal spaces with index and middle fingers apart on each side of the rib cage. Apply gently pressure, pressing or tapping down from first to fifth intercostal space of the kidney meridian. Repeat it three to five times. Okay, so uh Probably sounds a little, uh, let me share the screen. Okay, so you can see in the video, um, we use more index, middle, and ring finger rather than use thumb. Right? The reason is, it's on the chest area and if we use middle finger and ring finger, we naturally use less strength, right? So in order to protect our children, especially for babies, right? so you won't use too much strength naturally. So you can see um, in the video, um, the doctor demonstrate like with middle uh, uh, ring finger or index finger. So for the last step of intercostal space, you can gently press or you can just tap, like tapping. Right? So, so it's it's good enough, little bit, it's good enough to open the chest, to make the flam move outward, right? and then for the baby to breathe easily. Right? So that is, we call open the chest. It's a combined technique. Everybody quite okay? All right, so then we will talk about Okay, here you can see the share screen is the location. Uh, especially kidney 23 to kidney 27. So, so it's not that easy. Right? So I write down this is, uh, this you can see it quite clear is in between the midline and then the nipple is in the middle, right? Middle line. So in a reality, if you don't exactly uh, tapping on the middle line, let it be 
let's say you move a little bit left, a little bit right, it's all okay. It's, it's all fine. Okay, just remember the uh, procedures. Okay, first circle and then spread horizontally and then vertically. Vertically, make sure you don't go from bottom to top. It has to be from top to bottom. Okay, so that's in Chinese medicine we call the lung qi has to be descent. Descended, right? Descend the lung chi. If the lung chi is ascending, we call rebellious lung chi, and then we cough. So that's that's why the remember the procedure and remember the direction. So that's most important is you cannot go to the wrong direction, and then use gentle moderate pressure. Okay, the last step. As I said previously, we open the door, we enter, do five meridians, and then do specific points, uh, clear the heat on the forearms, and then go to the local area on the chest. And the last one, when we finish everything, we would like to close the door, right? close the orifice to complete the whole <laughs> procedure. So this one is very simple but important. Okay, I'll I'll let a Bobby to play the video first. Last step, closing the orifice. Tianjin is located in the middle between the base of the neck and the tips of the cranium, at the crest of the trapezius muscle. With hands gently grasping the muscles around Tianjin upward, may increase the pressure during an episode of the fibro condition. Closing the orifices uh, is simple. So just on the shoulder area, on the shoulder area, trapezius, and then you just grab, grab the trapezius five times or three to five times, use different pressure. Um, then that's it. Right? So this one, it can dispersing and block the flow of qi and blood, right? promote sweating. And this is um, also. Uh, I believe everybody like to be pressed like that. It's quite uh, comfortable. So that's it for all the manipulation. And in the real case, what do we do? So here is a brief introduction about uh, when a child has cough or some lung issue or um, not uncomfortable flow at the early stage. Um, so you can see. Chinese medicine divide into wind cold or wind heat. And when you see the symptom, wind cold at patient, the child has more clear, dilute phlegm, stuffy, runny, clear, runny nose, not sweating too much, not have high fever, but lots of cold, heavy body, belly ache. But on the heat side, this child will have a yellow, sticky phlegm. They feel very thirsty, soft bro, Turbid yellow or greenish nasal discharge and lots of fever, little bit chills, are uh, sweating more. So this is the symptom to differentiate heat and cold. But when you see the steps, you can see they are very similar. So we normally you should learn the 
cold type first. So you can see, open the orifices 24 times, number one. Uh, on the center tenon, open the orifice step two 24 times. And for the heat, it's the same as the left, except if, if the child have a high fever, you want to scraping the must toy bones 24, 48 times. Uh, five, after opening the door, five meridians, like it's list clearly here how many times, and it apply for any condition, right? So it's for five meridians. And then for the triple gay, little crease, and open the chest. You can see, uh, this is the examples, right? And if people have, if the child have high fever, you want to add, push heaven river. Otherwise, you don't need to use the heaven river, right? So you can see it. But remember, triple gaze and six full is one to three or three to one. It depends on heat and cold. Right? And then closing the orifices is a shoulders five times. That's it. So the last page, you can use it as the real application uh, when uh, your ch child has the condition. Okay? So that's for today's lecture. We don't, uh, this, this is all info, informative lecture. Right? So we don't want to replace to any real treatments. Uh, but it's a very good home care and uh, especially for for early stage, let's say you're waiting, waiting somewhere, waiting for help, and you can do this uh, 